Latin America is becoming an increasingly common destination for African immigrants as Europe tightens its immigration controls. More and more Africans are fleeing war and poverty in their homelands and are landing in port in Latin America. With over one million migrants a year, Europe is the primary destination for African migrants worldwide. Welcome to the Lola Show. We are in Barcelona, Spain. The majority of African migrants living overseas are in Europe, approximately 4.6 million, according to the International Organization for Migration. Thousands of Africans try to make the journey to Europe each year, all for the dream of a better life. We are in the city of Matorel, Barcelona, Spain. Spain or Spanish, España, officially the Kingdom of Spain, is a sovereign state and a member state of the European Union. It is located on the Iberian Peninsula in southwestern Europe. Its mainland is bordered to the south and east by the Mediterranean Sea, except for a small land boundary with Gibraltar, to the north and northeast by France, Andorra and the Bay of Biscay, and to the west and northwest by Portugal. And Spain is the second largest country in Western Europe, and the European Union, and the fifth largest country in Europe. Spain became an influential global empire in the early modern period, being one of the first countries to colonize the New World and leaving a legacy of over 500 million Spanish speakers today, making it the world's second most spoken first language. Spain is a democracy organized in the form of a parliamentary government under a constitutional monarchy. It is a developed country with the 13th largest economy in the world. Spain also has high living standard with the 10th highest quality of life index rating in the world as of 2005. It is a member of the United Nations, NATO, OECD, and WTO. immediate left is Mr. Curtis Aguedo. He's the president of the Nigerians in Catalonia, Barcelona. Welcome to the Lola Show. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's great to have you here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next to him, of course, is Mr. Innocent Nadi. You're a wonderful businessman. I hear we couldn't leave you out of this conversation. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having us in Barcelona. Then the person who's probably not a stranger to you in Nigeria is Mr. Kunle Sanusi, my own brother, who is the CEO of Abrax and uh, Abrax Cornerstone of Spain and in Nigeria. You made all this possible. Thanks, you little brother. Yeah, <laughs> uh, okay, next to him, seated to his left, is Mr. Olu Jackson Zakios. That's a mouthful. <laughs> Good afternoon. Yeah. Well, uh, yes, uh, thank you so much for, for hosting us in Barcelona. And this is the father of all. And of course, he's seated to my right. He also was instrumental in getting all of us together today, uh, the president of the Yoruba Association, Mr. James Osho. Thank you. Great to have you on the Lola Show. You are welcome to Spain. Thank you, sir. My lovely sister, I've just adopted you, in case you didn't know, Mrs. Deborah Ekundayo. Radiant. Thank you for coming to Lola. You're welcome. Ah, the author himself, the founding father of all the Nigerian communities in Barcelona, is a president of uh, the new Afro Catalan Spanish Entrepreneurial uh, Committee, uh, Mr. Ade Akifenwa. Thank you. You're welcome. welcome to the Lola Show. Thank you so much. I can't believe I have, I'm so fortunate to have all my family here in Barcelona. Great to have all of you. Thank you for coming. Ninety-seven percent of the inhabitants here are white, and I mean, I don't want to say the word white, but that's the fact. 
you don't speak their language. How's the adaptation process going? Do you want to take that? Yeah. Um, it is generally known that uh, life outside school is not an easy one. Hmm. And if the man decides to leave his school in search for a greener pastures, I think he should be prepared to go through the problems, take it as a challenge. And if he's, if he's strong enough and has luck on his side, he'll definitely succeed. Now, talking about adaptation outside for here in Spain has not been a very easy one for Nigerians. Hmm. Because we are Nigerians from the English culture. Hmm. And we are coming to Spain, which is of the Latin culture. Hmm. So we are having a clash of cultures here. And it has to be, it might have to go through another process of psychological colonization <laughs> to be able to adopt where here in Spain. In Spain. Now, How easy was that? Well, I came with all excitement in my heart to live in Spain, not really knowing 100% what the challenges would be. Hmm. But when I came here, I discovered that even though we thought it's Europe, uh, English is the general language, possibly in Europe, we discovered that here in Spain, not a single person speaks English. Not a single, not a single person, person speaks English. I found out. It's, it's very interesting to also note that even in their schools, they didn't speak English. Okay. It is just now they are adding English to their syllabus. When did you decide that, okay, I'm coming to Spain, they, uh, they don't speak English. How long did it take you to say, I'm going to school for it, or what happened? Did you get a book? And no, the, the, the first step we use in learning the language is to begin to watch their TVs, the television, listen to the radio, <laughs> pick up their papers, their newspapers, oh pick up their magazines, and when you now have the opportunity to go to their free language schools, mm -hmm. you will need to take advantage of it and attend the free language school so uh -huh. to be able to pick up the language. And uh, once you have done that, your integration or the adaptation is almost complete. I see. Socially, you have to be able to communicate. Okay. Did you come with some money when you first came? You, or you just had to sit in the house and learn the language first? Uh, another aspect. Uh, actually, we left Nigeria coming here. Mm -hmm. Prepared that we're coming for a greener pasture. Yes. Uh, actually, we never came with all that kind of money. I see. It's because uh, we left our country coming for a greener pasture. So in the situation when we got here, for the fact that we come for a greener pasture, we adapt with the people. We try to mix up with the people. How long did it take you? Well, precisely two or three years, I mean, for us to really get to... Into the system, to learn the system. <coughs> well, uh, because you, uh, you're you here in Spain and you speak fluent Spanish by now? Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> I have all this year we now speak Spanish. Everybody speaks Spanish? Yeah. But can you speak Spanish when you go back to Nigeria? I mean, would you be able to use that language for yeah. employment? Yes, of course. Yes, for Bishop. Coming up this week on the Lola Show. Oh, we are in Barcelona, Spain! Yay! Hmm. When I do the we begin. Hmm. Uh, they don't know One very important part of the Spanish healthcare system. The healthcare system. Yeah. You know, I've been to a couple of countries in Europe, but I've never seen anyone like that was The way they will handle you mentally is the way they will handle their president. Wow. When you see a small boy here, you can call, hey, James. <laughs> How are you? But it's not That's it's their culture. That's I say here. That's their culture. That's you have been here for a while now, and uh, I'm sure being black, that's of 97% of the population. What are the annoying myths or some of the things they say about black folks? Because when I was in America, they used to ask me questions like, are y'all still sleeping trees and all kinds of things? Do you still get that? Yes, Mr. Osho. Yeah, the most annoying ways uh, there are many things because of their cultural something, you know, when they look at us, uh, the, the Spanish people just, you know, they can at times to, to understand that our culture is difficult for them. 
Um, there are many things that the, the Spanish people uh, are used to. They know that uh, many Africans who are here, mm -hmm. they watch films. They see how people come here uh, on land, through the desert, suffering, you know. They, in fact, they look at all of us that we come in the same way. In the same boat, boat? Yes. But what is here is most of the people who are here, they are well educated back home. Mm. But to find themselves easily into the Spanish society, it's at times very difficult. What is one thing that they will say to you that gets you? Ugh. Maybe the films they have been watching, they see that uh, some blacks they live, live on the tree. Ah. So on the tree, they believe that uh, they can uh, not just you know, see, see us. And uh, the way we people, those of us who come from Africa, mm -hmm. who are here, mm -hmm. we do not have the, that idea that uh, some people live on the tree at all. So it's just an uh, embarrassment, and uh, you know, they <coughs> are told me, they teach their children that uh, these people, they are the they come here, they, they, maybe they are suffering, they are doing this. Oh, I see. So well, they, they don't know that, uh, you know, uh, in Africa, we say traveling is a part of education. Mm -hmm. When you travel out of your country, then you'll be able to learn about the culture of other countries. Mm -hmm. What we are doing today, if not because of education, we cannot do it. We cannot do it. Yeah, if we do not travel here, we cannot do it. It's just a challenge, challenge. to our government to know what, how they can do us in Nigeria. So that not everybody likes to come to, to this place. Because we, we believe that when you are educated, uh, so you can be used in any part of the world. Yes. That's why our people come from here. Yes. You know, many people are really that's, that's, that's very good. Uh, the Spanish people today, they are trying to understand that, oh, most of these people are very intelligent. Uh, because most of the, the people who first come here, mm -hmm. they have done a lot to accomplish some things uh, before they came. To, to, to As, yeah, the thank you, sir. Spanish okay. people understand that these, these people are not uh, Push over thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Has anybody ever had any other negative uh, experience being black in the 97%? Uh, yeah. I mean, this is not the America is usually more liberal. Mm. It's where I live because it's a very reserved place. Mm. It's about the food. About our food, you know, we ate some of our <laughs> food is very strong. <laughs> the vegetables. Timbalo EFO. Mm. When I do the EFO with the EU, mm. oh no, you are killing them. Within, within three minutes, the police will come. No, because no. Because of the sense of the food. And especially when I cook the ayamashi, that I have to fry the tamoy to write up. Unbelievable. All my ingredients. The police come because of because the smell. Because when my neighbors call them, their duty is to come. To come and see what the if they the stubborn if they are used I really there's a problem. And they've come so on many occasions and they see that I was just cooking, doing my own food, and now I cook what I want. But initially it was really difficult for them to adapt. What if you were cooking manla? Yes! <laughs> you know, yeah. you are cooking the ayamashe uh, sauce. This is the first time I'm hearing this. Even yeah, for me, that is cooking. <coughs> I, I get sh uh, choked up at times because of the oil. So, at times I feel, well, it's one of those things. But now they know that, yes, I have to eat my but food. But you must eat it. I must eat my food. On which countries are uh, immigration policy is most lenient? Let's say we were next door to uh, Brazil and France, um, which country's uh, policy is much lenient to African immigrants? Do you guys know? Maybe Brazil or Spain? That's Spain. system. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, why are we system is, um, oh, you have to, you find it tough for the first two, three years. Mm -hmm. But this is the only place that you can get your papers, your resident paper, easy. Wow. Easier than many other European countries. You mean if, if somebody comes in illegally or? If, if you come in illegally, illegally or legally, once you go to the adjutant or they call it here, that is the local government council, mm -hmm. you tell them that I, I have come and want to live here. 
If you have a place to show them that I'm living here, they are ready to take you. Mm. They will put you through. From their departmental page, they will give you some addresses. The Red Cross, the Caritas, mm. where you can seek the first help. Um, so Spain has the most liberal yes. of all the European it Union. It was when people now started calling me. Oh. They keep the risk of life, between life and death. That Spanish people thought. There's nothing we can do than to give these people paper, make them this feel, make them to have a second life. A second home. A I mean, second home, a second a life. New life. Because many people left home. They are not home for living. Okay. okay, please stay with us. This is TLS and we are in Spain, Barcelona. How do you think people change resolution? You will become a different person entirely when you get something much bigger. I mean plane crashes, helicopters or small small aircraft. As a matter of fact, I'm the only Minister of Aviation. You know, th there was not one crash under under my tenure in the last 10 years. Every other Minister of Aviation. You do on 300 Naira. That's why they just have to walk. And that's why you see going where it's beggars over the streets. That's why you hear all kind of desperation that go to make money at all costs. For all this 53 years? Three years. And it's part of the stupendous worst. Hello and welcome back. We're still in the beautiful city of Matorel in Barcelona, Spain. Uh, with me, of course, are my guests. I introduce the all eminent Nigerians living in Spain. The labor part of immigration, when you, when you get these uh, immigrants coming in, there's extra labor. Could it be part of that or just the human? Looking at Spanish uh, environment as well. I don't know, maybe they, they went back to think about the Asian days. I mean, they never gave room for incorporation mm. of the blacks. Also, not forget to add here that they accepted immigrants mm. because they had a booming construction. Uh, yeah. For labor, yeah. You know, uh, they were tareas, they were jobs. Uh -huh. uh, the Spanish were coping to the black team and even at cheaper cost. That was because we are our people we are no papers. Mm -hmm. And for you to leave, they give you a black job for you to survive. The, what is the government is subsidizing with the black job. If even you don't have a job, you are sure that yes, I'm going to have a job. Mm -hmm. But the Spanish people, they are more cowardly. When the President Clinton mm -hmm. was still in the doing in office, yes, in the so he came to advise Hasna, which was the former president of this mm -hmm. government, uh, where we uh, allowed the immigrants to come into the country because they have seen many numbers of countable immigrants who were trying to cross from the Mediterranean Sea. Killing themselves. So many of them couldn't make it. Mm -hmm. So many which came in mm -hmm. and for that time, they were not legal. They mm. were not legally documented. Yes, they mm. were documented. But in this case, and uh, according to Clinton, what mm. he advised the president was like, let these people be legal. Mm -hmm. Give them the, uh, the residency. Let them walk. Of course, the economy so, power that comes from even having extra. Even in America, they mm. write the they mm -hmm. allow immigrants in into the system. So this was exactly what one of my brother was saying right here that the president was saying that to boom the economy of the country it's which is really important you must let in so it has nothing to do maybe the, the, the conscience the or, or no it's for economic, economic power primary, right. primary for economical uh, power the, the and then it's easier to document them the issue mm. here is which country has the most linear, linear yeah, of the eu now mm -hmm. One very important part of the Spanish immigration policy as regards immigrants mm -hmm. coming into their country, whether legal or illegal, is their health care system. The health care system. Mm. I've and heard so much about that. I've, 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 I've been to a couple of countries in Europe, but I've never seen anyone like that of Spain. And for the health care system, wow. so many people have remained here. Wow. Because the, the way they will handle you mentally, you who is an immigrant without papers, is the way they will handle their president. Wow. The, the hospital and treatment they will 
give to their president wow. uh, or the prime minister wow. to give to you. Without insurance? Without insurance. Without even the papers to be vaccinated. And you're going to, you're going to have 100% treatment with free drugs. Wow. Free drugs. Unbelievable. Free Kudos to Spain. Free yeah. that's attracted a lot of people. Wow. Of course. Uh, thank you. The next question I was asking was that now, remember since 9 11, United States have tightened up on borders, and the uh, United Kingdom have tightened up. France is actually going through some immigration cleansing. And uh, what do you think this will do to their labor, uh, the labor uh, economy, to, the, to, their, to their economy, if they should get rid of all the immigrants? Let's say, okay, some of them are tightening up. Let's get rid of all the immigrants. What do you think this would do to the economy? You were going to answer the question, sir, Mr. Fermi. So I believe in the first place, they cannot drive away the foreign immigrants. And as we are saying before, if you look at the, the number of immigrants in the mid 80s mm -hmm. in Spain, it was less than half of a million. Less than half a million. Less than half of a million. Yes. Then by 2010, mm -hmm. it rose to over 6 million. So we are talking. Just in a very short of period uh, of time, mm -hmm. it rise from less than uh, yes. 500,000 to about 6 million. Wow. The reason is very, is, uh, is very easy because what happened when we were talking about the paper problem before? We have a lot of immigrants who are working illegally. Mm, no undocumented, yeah. So the government is covered that. The best thing is to legalize those who are working. Yes. So that is why they give these papers to millions of people, mm -hmm. which rise the really social security. We have about four million that are here. Those who can consider as a ghost workers, mm -hmm. whereby they are not contributing to the economy at to all. The economy. Mm -hmm. they as a result of building this papers today, they legalize it. They the make money coming out. Yeah. The company who, who, uh, uh, who they are working for also pay their tax, whereby yeah. it increases the social security system. So it would be a very bad idea to say, out. It would be, it, that is impossible. Mm -hmm. When there is economic growth, you need people to come and work. Yes. So, that one, and they discovered that by that time, the paper was tightened to the people. But they discovered that we have millions of people who are working on the ground, who are not contributing to the mm. economy. So that was one of the main reasons they gave paper to everyone. Okay. Thank you. But that benefits the immigrants because they are able to legalize themselves. So, and at the same time, it also benefits the government. Of course. Because the receipt tax, we the tax yeah, that increased in the social security, security system. system. And even by day, European, if they have any cotton, <laughs> they go to the hospital. Wow. The visit even to the doctor. We are back. In our own case, we consider it just as a minor, minor thing. In that case, it, even during this uh, period, we did with the immigrant workers, it increased the standard that it increased the, the economy of the country. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Thank you for that answer. I know that uh, there will be no possible, no way that any government will say they want to get rid of uh, immigrants because pos possibly their own background or, or heritage is from an immigrant ancestry. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, coming up this week on the Lola Show. Oh, we are in Barcelona, Spain. Yay! Within, within three minutes, the police will come. 
one very important part of the Spanish healthcare system. The healthcare system. You know, I've been to a couple of countries in Europe, but I've never seen anyone like that was still. The way they, they handle you mentally is the way they will handle their president. Wow. When you see a small boy here, you can call, hey, James. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Well, he's not uh, here. 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 I said here. Their Living abroad is not for everyone. Though it can certainly be a fun and glamorous experience, it can also be fraught with challenges and unexpected difficulties. There are many reasons a person may end up living abroad for military service, work requirements, marriage, and a better financial opportunities. Homesickness is a common complaint among new expatriates. Many say it takes two to three years to fully assimilate into a new culture and lessen feelings of loneliness. Depending on your financial situation and the distance between you and your family and friends at home, visits may be few and far between. Fortunately, technology can help you get your fix from your loved ones in form of a phone call, email, social networking. It's been fun being here on TLS. Again, we are in the beautiful city of Spain. And remember that one of the biggest benefits of working abroad is that you get to meet people from different cultural backgrounds. Since you continue to meet with a wide range of people, you have an excellent opportunity to network with people from different countries in the world. From me, Lola Sanusi, in the beautiful city of Matorel, Barcelona, España, I am saying hasta pronto. Eh?